Dolphy Voidwalker, you stand accused of being an overrated magic card in the modern format. How do you plead? Not guilty. We shall see. Alright, what is up my friends? Welcome to the Monday video here on Cool Stuff Inc. Dot com. This worked out so well last week. I'm trying it again this week. So, of course, last week I played uh, the Creative Coma deck in Stork, and I recorded the video right before I played in the $5,000 Open. I top aided, super cool. And uh, this week, same thing. I'm playing in the $5,000 Insight Esports Modern Open tomorrow. And um, I played a lot of Modern with my 10 new brews. I haven't played much the last week or so, but I'm keeping an eye on Aspiring Spike. Aspiring Spike, I've played Aspiring Spike's decks multiple times now on my videos here. Um, just Probably the number one modern content creator out there. Aspiring Spike does only modern all the time, constantly, constantly, constantly. I had him on as a guest on Mod Monday recently, and uh, just a place to go right now for, for modern decks. And Aspiring Spike's been playing this deck for the last few days. I've been watching pretty closely on the stream, and he's been crushing. I think he's like 45 and 5 or something like that. And this is essentially uh, the newest version of Jund or Rock or whatever. Just like the kind of like the, the fair mid range deck. But no Boomer stuff happening here. No Dark Confidants, no Liliana the Veils, no Tarmogoyfs. Straight Rakdos, a bunch of new cards here. And yes, I know, Dothy Voidwalker, a card I've poo-pooed a lot. Uh, there are four in this deck. Uh, a lot of great variants are happening in the format right now. And uh, we'll see how it performs. We'll see. We'll see. But what we have here, like I said, it's basically just a, a Jun deck. Uh, a little more aggressive than usual. Of course, Lurus. If you're not playing Lurus in Modern, what are you doing, right? What are you even doing anyway? And uh, so Lurus means no Blood Braid Elves and no Lilianas. And uh, realistically, green is not necessary. There's a pretty fast uh, curve here. We've got four Ragavan Nimble Pilfer. Of course, really powerful one drop. Um, kind of like a Goblin Lackey, but it doesn't require you to actually do any work. Um, just hit your opponent with it and you'll be in great shape. And of course, a lot of kill spells here. A lot of discard. Also, Dragon's Rage Channeler. Um, one of the more sleepery cards from Modern Horizons 2. This card's freaking awesome. Uh, it's just a, like a, it's like a red Delver of Secrets, basically. It's cheap, it makes your draws better, fills your graveyard, and then it just acts in the air and kills your opponent. And, um, those two new threats from Modern Horizons have removed the need for green for Tarmogoyf or anything like that. We have, uh, eight great one-drops, and we're also going to remove the, the relevance of Shadow, too, where we don't need to put ourselves to, to five life to try and win a game. We can just play these solid one-drops. Uh, a lot of new two-drops as well. Of course, the aforementioned Voidwalker. I mean, if everyone's playing graveyard stuff, Woodwalker is very solid for sure. So, you know, it is, a, it is a main deck graveyard hate card, which is pretty awesome. So in that regard, you know, if you're, uh, if the 3-2 Shadow, that's also a Leon of the Void is good enough, then Woodwalker is pretty great. A little upside here and there. And Torok, a Dread Cantor, a card I am really high on. Um, this card's great. Just a really, really good card. You know, this is sort of like your Blood Braid Elf, a lot of value for four mana. And then of course, just a reasonable card to play on two if necessary. Then, of course, the cards we all know here, right? Cole against Command, Croxa, Lightning Bolt, Thought Seize, etc. And um, one more I actually missed is uh, Unholy Heat. And this is basically a one, one mana Terminate. I mean, this can kill Planeswalkers as well. Uh, six damage, of course, Delirium. Not too hard in this deck. We have lands, we have creatures, we have artifacts, we have instants, we have sorceries. So, not too bad. It's pretty cool. Of course, Bobble plays well with Lurus and Delirium. And there's some cool lands in here. It's very clear that this deck is very well tuned. And Spike's been playing this deck for a while now. This is a lot of cute lands. One Shinka, the Blood Soaked Keep, uh, which can give a legendary creature first strike. And one Shizo, Death Storehouse, can give a legendary creature fear. That's how old this card is, uh, fear. And of course, these play extremely well with Ragavan. Um, get that Ragavan in. Give it fear, give it first strike, whatever you need to do. Cyborg's got uh, a whole host of Shattering experience, that's for sure. So uh, goodbye to your uh, all your affinity decks and stuff like that. And uh, also, you can kill... Uh, Urza Saga tokens, things like that. We have extra Lutzies, a couple explosives here, good against Prowess and uh, good against the Asmo decks and things like that. Another Heat. Chalice the Void and Void Mirror seem to be here for mostly for the uh, the Cascade decks. So, of course, you Cascade into a Living End or Cascade into a Crashing Footfalls or whatever. Uh, no color mana was spent to cast it, so Void Mirror will counter it. And then, of course, Chalice on Zero will counter it as well. Also, a couple Alpine Moons. Now, these are obviously good against Tron, but against Ursa Saga, Alpine Moons, one of the best cards possible. It's a one mana Stone Rain that further removes the ability to play any future Ursa Saga because for some reason, it just kills an Ursa Saga if it's already in play. So they go turn one Saga, play an Amulet or whatever. You uh, play Alpine Moon, kill Versaga, 
one mana Stone Rain, and I like Stone Rains a lot. That's the deck. I'm pumped to play it. And um, hopefully, again, you're seeing this on Monday. Hopefully, I do well in the tournament on, uh, on Saturday. We'll see. But first, we work for our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com. Cool Stuff Inc. is proud to sponsor Jim Davis. We offer great deals on card games, tabletop RPGs, board games, and more. Get a free token featuring Jim Davis and take 5% off your next order if you use the code JIM5 at checkout. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. All right, round one. We've won the die roll. Luris, I choose you. Yeah, I'm sick of Luris. I don't know if you're sick of Luris in the comments. I'm kind of sick of Luris, honestly. Just Luris everything all the time. It's so funny how this card was once legal without the uh, the nerf, you know? All right, so we have an opening hand here, but it's not great. Uh, we're on the play. We do have Ragavan on the play, which is a pretty big draw. We have Voidwalker. We have pretty good mana. We have Bobble, so we can fetch um fetch up a land if we want. It's a little annoying that we like want to have red on one and black black on two, so we can't fetch a basic. But we can just Bobble, Ragavan, um, probably Bobble ourselves to uh to uh just go for a little pseudo scry we're gonna keep this end it is a little land heavy but of course flood insurance here in luris terminal back of the play is really good so point mulligan's two six cards point's name is kind of familiar familiar so bobble first look at our top card it is a torok dread cantor so are we interested in drawing that i think we are i think we have four lands already and torok's pretty reasonable um just go for a, uh, you know, Ragavan monkey here. This also is the uh, the least damage we can take because we can now we can fetch up a basic swamp next turn, and uh, so they're playing a sort of aggressive strategy. We're good to go in that regard. So Baba will draw a Torok, and we'll see what's up on their side of the ball. And uh, of course, Ragavan, like the Abalaki and Legacy, requires an immediate answer. That's an Amulet of Vigor. So good news, bad news. Uh, the good news is Ragavan's gonna hit. The bad news is like we can't really use their cards super well. But uh, we do have Torok, which is kind of cool. So let's uh, ship here. Of course, the Lagavan is legendary, so a little awkward. But send in the old monkey. Send in the old monkey. And we get uh, an Urza Saga. So can't play that one. So... Just gonna get a swamp here and play Voidwalker. Life total does kind of matter because usually they can deal 16 out of nowhere with a hasted titan. So if we can keep ourselves around that range of above 16, we can hopefully uh hopefully survive and uh could play another Ragavan. Probably don't want to do that though. A second amulet? Oh god, here we go. Alright, somebody get the guitar. I feel like Amulet just like always has it turned to against me. Even when they kill themselves. If you missed the video uh, from a little while ago, uh, a few videos ago, our Amulet player just popped off on turn two, played like nine Titans, but also played like nine packs and couldn't pay for them and just couldn't kill me and just conceded on turn two. It's pretty funny. Dryad, okay, they're, they're really popping off here. So uh, some tells me this Torok is not going to get the Titan out of their end, and I don't think we can beat a Titan on turn two. So... Them's the breaks, I suppose. Just an absolute perfect uh, hand here for our Titan opponent. They're gonna use every card too. And then once the Titan's in play, we need to win the game like next turn. Azusa, what is going on? I mean, I only have one card left. Is it a Titan? They have Teleria West. Yeah, okay. So they needed they needed to have all three of these mana effects to be able to Telaria West for some respect. Right. I mean they could screw up. They gotta pay their pact, you know. So they ain't gonna kill us here. Well, I guess I can double strike it because they have two amulets. Whatever. We'll see what happens. Yeah, so actually we're we are just dead here. This is just like the actual perfect. They get a wait no, they bounce. Oh yeah, they're, yeah, they're good. They get a Vesuva, Kai Boros Garrison, get the double strike land, and uh 
yeah, that is a uh, that is a really clean turn two kill on our opponent's side. Um, real glad I have this Dothy Woodwalker in play. Am I right? Eh, am I right? So yeah, if we had drawn a thought seize, obviously it'd be a lot better. But I think that our keep is obviously still correct. I mean, we have turn two monkey attack, and they just they're gonna have a stone cold nuts and whatever you know. Uh, we can't even block. This thing has freaking shadow. So if we could block, we would uh we'd be alive actually. Uh, we can't. So. If Dalthy Voidwalker was a Grizzly Bear, we'd still be alive. Not that that would matter, because we would have lost the game next turn. But So, not a very fun first game there. Not a very fun first game. We're going to bring in a Thoughtseize. Um, Alpine Moon is not particularly great against uh, against them. I mean, Shattering Spree out to the Unholy Heats can go. Uh, shattering Spree. Obviously, you can kill an, an Amulet on one, but that's like not particularly exciting. I mean, Alpine Moon can name one of, like, like the Haste Land just to, like, stop them from doing that. So their Titans are worse. The problem is, like, we are a fair deck, so just, like, casting a Titan is pretty good. Um, I suppose we don't have many ways to kill a 2-4 if we take out these Unholy Heats. So maybe our Lightning Bolts are actually just worse. We'll leave these in. And then do I want any Shattering Sprees? So I guess I want the Alpine Moons. Um, and then maybe we want like... Maybe like a Shattering Spree or two, just so we can kill a turn two amulet. I would say Torok doesn't seem great. I would say, say Crocs so doesn't seem great. So we just like shave down on that. And... It seems reasonable. Also, the, uh, the Unholy Heats can kill blockers for Ragaman. We have four heat actually. Maybe like a uh, Crox is pretty mopey. Torox fine. Voidwalker is also not particularly great either. Honestly, bring their heat in. So maybe in that case we just want some bolt. Maybe maybe we just cut, all, cut all the Voidwalkers actually. Doesn't really do anything against them. Yeah, I'm actually gonna cut all those. So leave, a, leave a Crox in, and I might just bring in the maybe leave the bolts in. Maybe we should just shave a Crox. So leave the bolts in. And do I more Shattering Sprees to kill Amulet? I don't think so. I think the Bolts are fine. So now our threats are, we have Croxa, we have our One Drops, and Torok, which I think is enough. Again, Woodwalker, like, if we're not, if we're not blown, it's not using their Graveyard, Woodwalkers, or they don't have, like, like you know, Ammer Cool or, like, stupid 10 drops in their deck to, like, Thoughtseize combo. Um, I think it's very exciting, so. On the play, choose Lurse. And, uh, I mean, this hand is certainly much more interactive. We can keep this hand. It's not great, but we can find a threat. We have triple interaction. Pawn Mulligan 6. I, like I get turned 2 at a reasonable amount of time in my cool stuff videos. Their hand is... Saga Saga. Forest Misty Chamber. So Alpine Moon is also great in Saga too, so that's kind of nice. For the forest, they just draw Amulet off the top, because why wouldn't they? <laughs> okay, and then uh, we're not going to Thoughtseize them, because obviously they have a... Ooh, wow, my upkeep stop is gone. Um, so we're going to Shattering Spree this. And we're going to play a Tap Blood Crypt, because their hand is Saga Saga, Misty, Simic Growth Chamber. Of course, Saga can put an, am an Amulet into play, which is kind of annoying, but... Hooligan's Command. Uh, that's not bad. So, again, I'm not really interested in casting Thoughtseize because, like, they just have one card we don't know about. So, but I'm also fine leaving up Hooligan's Command. So, we'll just play, play Castle here and just say go. Could put Lurus in our hand, too, I guess. Just get something in play. Actually, I, I like that better, actually. Just put Lurus. I doubt, I doubt we're casting Hooligan's Command this turn. And we need some sort of a threat. So, and now we draw Bobble. It's really good, too. So, Chapter 2 on Saga. Play Misty, so they go. They can make a 1-1, one, one, just whatever. We play, we draw Lightning Bolt. Once they get their Amulet, I guess we're gonna, now we're going to Thoughtseize and see what's up, because we can decide if we play Loris or not, and if we, need to, if we need to kill the Amulet on the spot. So play Thoughtseize. They have a Tireless Tracker and a Summoner's Pact. Wow. Those are both pretty good. Um, so... 
They get an amulet. I mean, they can't use Summoner's Pact profitably, so I think we can, we can wait a turn on Thoughts using that. Um, right now they have Chamber, Saga, Pact. They're going to lose the Saga, get an amulet. They have Growth Chamber, which will make four mana total, and then they can't play a Titan. So I think we're, we can hold off on Thoughts using the Pact for a, bit, a minute. So we can just play, uh, play Lurus here. Fortunately, nothing in our graveyard, but they're going to crack the Misty. They're going to get a basic Forest. They're going to make a Construct. So they might do again. Obviously, we have Coligan's Command here, and we have Lightning Bolt too, so we can clean this up pretty good. If they want a Construct here, they can. We can like Shatter the, shatter the Amulet, Shock a Construct, Bolt a Construct, and we're all good to go here. Mop all this up. As we said, no fear of a getting tight in this turn, so we can hold off on the pact. They get over three, not a problem. So we're going to uh up. Oh, that was also an insane draw. So Bobble. They have three cards in hand. Look at their top card. It is a uh, a, a breeding pool. Okay, good. Play this. Let's just look at our top card. It's a bloodstained mire. Okay. So we're going to Coligan's Command, uh, Shatter this, Shock this. We can Bolt this, and they don't got much going on. We can Thought Seize the Pact next turn, because they won't be able to have six mana anyway. Um, yeah, that all sounds good. So, so we're going to uh, we're going to Shatter, uh, deal two. And we're going to... I guess we could, in theory, like... Just uh, fire off a Thought Season now and just get rid of it. So you can always bolt a Construct later anyway. I'll just do it now, sure. That's fine, actually. Our let is fine. <laughs> okay, they drew a second pack in the interim, so all right, whatever, I guess. So they have, they have Pack, they have Pack Chamber. Um, we still go. Draw two off our Bobble, which is nice. Get the old Bobble Lurus engine going. I think a lot of a lot of Lurus in in modern is just Bobble. If they were to ban Bobble, I think that'd be a way to get Lurus down to like reasonable numbers. Unholy Heat, sure. Chapter two on Saga. There's a breeding pool tapped. There's a construct attack for two. So on the other hand is exactly Grow Chamber Pact, which is great. Let's untap. Monkey? Play Bobble. We're gonna look at our top card. Is a Graven Cairns. I mean, we're gonna like heat dash attack. Um, they're gonna get an amulet and have two, three, four, five mana. They still can't Titan, so I think they can kill a Titan. Dude, that's, that's insane. They might actually hold the heat. Right, let's uh, do this. Let's get a mountain, I guess, whatever. We're gonna dash this bad boy. Yeah, I'm not actually gonna gonna hold the do the heat. We're gonna bolt this. How good is freaking Urza Saga? They haven't cast a spell this game. They actually haven't cast a spell this game, and they've been like, we've had we've had to use multiple interactive spells. It's freaking crazy. Urza Saga is unreal. All right, so uh, get in. We got their top card. It is a another Summoner's Pact. Probably not playing that one. Um, I guess we could actually use treasures to pay to pay for it, but nothing green in our deck, so. Um, and then we'll just uh, say go here. We have a draw off of our uh, a draw off of our bobble. Again, they have a summoner's pact and a simic grow chamber in hand. They're about to pop off their saga. They can get an amulet, but they only have five mana for a titan. Also, draw an explore effect. And if they do, we can just kill a titan with unholy heat anyway. So, so float a mana. In their main phase. Oh, they actually... I, I actually did not account for the fact that Urza Saga taps for mana. I forgot that the uh, the Saga goes off actually in your main phase. You can float the mana. And now they can say they do have the mana for Titan. That is my, that's my mistake. But I think we'll still be okay here. Um, we still have Unholy Heat for the Titan, which is actually unreal. It's one mana card can kill a Titan. Summer Fact. Titan. Titan. That's wild. That's wild. Yeah, I totally forgot that because it, it feels like an upkeep effect. 
Totally forgot that the Saga triggers in the main phase. You can use the mana. So they get their stuff. But the good news here, of course, is that uh, we uh, have an Unholy Heat, so we don't really care. And they keep their, uh, they wisely keep their, their mana available to play for the pact. But I think this is just game, so. All right, we draw. Coligan's Command. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. Shattershock. Monkey. Yep, that's game. All right, so better game there. Better game. They didn't turn to us, so it was always that. It was always that. Um, I think maybe on the draw for game three, you might want a third Shattering Spree. Maybe we'll shave a bolt. Uh, K Command was very, very good for us. So it was Unholy Heat. Unho Unholy Heat's unreal. That's a wild card. It's a wild card. All right, so on the draw now, of course, but main discard spells and things of that nature. All right, and our hand is not great. It's definitely not great. I mean, we have the monkey. One of them against the six. I think we're going to keep. If they if they turn to us again with a, on a six-card hand, it's sort of like whatever. It's like pretty pretty unlikely. And we can uh, we can bobble ourselves. We have turn one monkey. We are on the draw, so obviously turn one monkey is a little worse. But I think with this uh, being on the draw and the scry and everything else, I think we can keep. If they kept seven, I might have mulligan. But with them on six and us being on the draw and all those other things being in our favor, I think it's fine. Turn one, Valakit, the Molten Pinnacle, sure. So we draw a Swamp. So Bobble first. We're going to look at our own card. See if I want to shuffle Blood Samire or not. Now that the Dothy Voidwalkers are no longer in the deck, um, don't got to worry about having Black Black on turn two. Our top card is a Blood Crypt. Don't want that one. So let's get a Mountain. Play a Monkey. Draw a card. <laughs> I mean, if you have a Monkey, you're pretty happy, you know? Forest, Explore, Valakit, number two. So their hand is bad. Dragon's Rage Channel are pretty sweet. Just going to attack here with our monkey and see what turns up. Start there. Free of those petals are pretty good. We also hit a top. Be still my beating heart. The best card ever printed is available to us. I can cast it here on turn two, actually. I don't know if I can resist that, honestly. Um, turn two tracker here. What are our other options? What? Let me be a reasonable human being for like half a second. Uh, okay, just kidding. Cast a tower striker. Pay green. Turn two tower striker. Let's freaking do this. This card is unreal. This card might be a little too much, you know. Like probably didn't need the dash ability. It would still be insanely good. Abundant harvest. Cool new card. And they uh, they choose land and they find a growth chamber. Okay. So we would like to find a discard spell. Um, that's a Graving Cairns. All right. I mean, we can we can Torok them this, this turn, which is pretty, pretty insane. So, so we can have a bunch. Slightly Sanctuary, sure. We'll just play Swamp here and just Torok them. I mean, like, obviously, if we hit the uh, the Titan they have, it's pretty insane. They don't have an Amulet let yet. Like, we're in pretty good shape, so. Make a Clue. So you discard two. They discard an Arboreal Grazer and a Dryad. And then we get two counters on our Torok, which is awesome. Now we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine power in play. So I'd be a little happier if our, our heat was a bolt, but um, if we crack two clues, that, that's almost enough. Azusa Lost but Seeking, okay. Celeria West, okay. One card left, okay. Um, pretty close to lethal here. Didn't, didn't, uh, didn't draw a spell there that was relevant. Now... We unholy heat here and get it for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We could uh, just pop this clue and try and draw a thought season of some kind. Or we can, uh, yeah, I guess we're like pretty locked in what we're playing here. Yeah, let's just pop the clue look for a thought season. They would also pump the Torok as well. So pump the tracker. Inquisition of Kozilek. So this could hit a um, Summoner's Pact. 
I suppose we're casting this. So let's, uh, let's play Graven Karens, right? Make Clue, make Black Red. Start by casting a position. Ooh, it was Summoner's Pact. And finish off the uh, Trifecta here or whatever. And put them to one. We get a treasure. We hit the Titan off of the uh, the monkey, and that's game. Yeah, I mean, monkey's pretty unreal. Um, definitely a pretty good card. Not gonna, not gonna lie there. I mean, the thing is, like, it really is just like all the upside of Goblin Lackey with none of the uh, the downside. Of course, the downside of Goblin Lackey is that it is a one one that does nothing unless it hits. Um, and you need to put it needs to be played into a Goblin deck where all of your cards are goblins, and that means there's no room for lightning bolts and inquisitions and all these removal spells and stuff. But playing it in a deck like this where you just have all this removal to push it through, it's just so wild. The card just seems so good. Round two. Win and die rolls. Let's go. Loris, I choose you. Monkey again. Gonna keep this one. And uh, we do have Graven Karn, so we can just like... I don't love filter lands, I'm not gonna lie. Um, especially in a deck like this with so many one mana spells, but... Spike's smart of an item. Spike's playing two of them. It does allow for a turn one monkey and turn two Voidwalker. They can be really, really awkward when you have multiple one minus spells, but it's just Mountain Monkey. Just gonna let it ride. Can't not play Monkey on turn one. Monkey! Gemstone Mine. It's a dredge deck. Slide of hand. Okay. Probably, probably a... Uh, some sort of ad nauseum combo deck. Lotus Bloom, sure. I mean, this should be like pretty solid for us, I would think. Coligan's Command? Hey, boy. Now they can go off at instant speed, so Coligan's Command on the Lotus Bloom might not be effective. All right, Monkey's going to reveal. <laughs> Just what I always wanted, a Phyrexian on life. Uh, okay. Um... Yeah, we're just going to play the old Raven Karens. Play the old Voidwalker. And uh, we could cast Inquisition here. Maybe we want to, because we can hit a, uh, a, what's it called? Like a Pensive Prism. I think it's like, they have Prism, we can just like Coligan's Command it. We have plenty of mana next turn, so it's like, go. Uh, I don't think there's anywhere we're, we're like particularly scared of. I guess uh, Profane Tutor would be a really good one. I think Profane Tutor is like really, really good. That's like a card we might have wanted to hit, but... They're also like getting low on this uh, gemstone mine too. So as a as a pris printed prism, which is great. So we'll just uh, call against command that we can inquisition them. We can just do everything. Just do it all. Just do it all. Catacombs. So first things first. Smashy, smashy. Monkey. Monkey reveals. I didn't even see it. Uh, something. Uh, a, uh, a dark slick shores sure and we're gonna play a catacomb so just get a swamp i suppose i probably screwed up actually i should have um i should have called against command in the first main phase they can't float mana but whatever we're going to shatter and they discard now the gemstone mine's counting down to uh to zero as well so a little land destruction element here. Lotus Bloom, Lotus Bloom is looming, but again, they can go off at instant speed with the Lotus Bloom. So trying to shatter it, not always going to work super well. Uh, clear Water Pathway and Pentad Prism are gone. Cast Inquisition of Kozilek. Grand is Angel's Grace, Pact of Negation, Pentad Prism, Spoils of the Vault. Okay, obviously they have the potential for a Spoils of the Vault plus uh, a Thassa's Oracle combo as well. So, but with a Grace, I guess they're lacking the mana to be able to Grace and Ad Nauseam. They draw Ad Nauseam. So I think it's Spoils of the Vault. Um, yeah, I think Pact Negations, whatever. If they want to cast Prism, they have to uh, lose their Gemstone Lions to draw land. So they take Spoils of the Vault. And then... Uh, we will be saying go and hopefully drawing a spell next turn. It's pretty wild that we can uh, we can actually um, hard like we can lure us to hand and cast lure us next turn if we don't draw a spell. 
It's pretty wild, except for the Ragavan token, but all right, there's Lotus Bloom. Again, Voidwalker not really doing much in this match, just like a 3-2, but... All right, so Sack the Gem Summon, play Prism. And now they will have six mana. So if they draw an Ad Nauseam, we're dead. But I mean, I can't take everything, so... Draw. Monkey. All right. Um, I would love to hit like a sleight of hand off of the monkey. That'd be cool. <laughs> I think they play multiple Thassa's Oracles, so I don't think it actually like does much for us, but it's still pretty fun. Um, do I wish to cast Thassa's Oracle or put Lurus into my hand? I mean, Lurus doesn't actually do anything. An Oracle could help find find a uh, a point of disruption for next turn. I guess Lurus is lethal, right? Three, six, seven, eight. Um, so probably just want to cast Lurus. Yeah, I guess. All right. Don't think our little matters at all. All right, don't kill me. There are definitely cards they can draw that kill me. So, right other hand is Pact of Negation, Angel's Grace, and so they could. I guess they could Grace here, and or I'm sorry, they could Pack this and then Grace in their upkeep. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Just sort of like either they have or they don't at this point. You know, we did we did draw you know a number of lands this game, so five lands by turn four, only one discard spell, not a ton going on. Our Voidwalker not look very good. If it was a Dark Confidant, we'd be much much happier. Um, not saying it's correct to play Dark Confidant, but just saying so. So far, these first two matches, uh, the Voidwalker watch is it really hasn't done much of anything. Um, it's been a three-two. The graveyard's not been relevant. No cards to steal that are relevant. Um, all right. I mean, so that means this, this means they are casting Angel's Grace on their upkeep, and I guess this does stop them from dying next turn, but it also wastes the mana. So either we're dead, either we're dead, we're dead or not here. I guess play Grace, sure. And uh, I guess if we like now, if we leave Voidwalker up, we could in theory Angel's Grace in response to them comboing and then not lose. Um, that's obviously a face up play, but that's kind of cute, I suppose, because they use the grace like that. Um, and then they obviously, like, if that circle doesn't work, they just lose the next turn. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool little interaction. So, pretty pretty big desperation to visions here. They have drawn their card, and they are scrying, and they have two cards in hand. I don't know either one of them. Do you have me or not, opponent? What's it going to be? I feel like it's not that complicated. The scry went bottom top. Um, I guess they do have, a t do have another turn, right? But again, like if they have, a, if they have another turn, we're just going to leave Voidwalker up for Grace. And then I don't think they can win. I could easily be wrong on that, but Unholy Heat. That's not very good. All right. So yeah, we're going to leave a Voidwalker here. And so there's no point in attacking them putting them at three. It doesn't actually matter. So we'll just put them to, to six and then, I mean, try and kill them next turn, I guess. Up. Oh. So they they saw the face up play. They so they they, they realized that we can we, they can't lose they can't win the game with Voidwalker. So obviously I got proven wrong again anyway. Whatever. All right. Not everyone's right, right about every card. All right. So a lot of bad cards against them. Obviously our uh, re removal spells aren't very good. The unholy heats can go. Um, Void mirror is interesting. Uh, Void mirror. I guess it only counters Lotus Bloom. Chalice does also. Chalice also counters. Uh, I guess pack negation that much. I mean, Shattering Spree, Alpine Moon, Thought Seeds is obviously in. That's pretty easy. I mean, like, we already have a, a decent amount of cards that are good against them. Um, Shattering Spree is... It's okay against Pentad Prism. It's not good against Lotus Bloom. Chalice the Void on zero. Chalice on one does counter Angel's Grace. It also counters all our stuff, too. Again, Void Mirror only stops 
Um, only stops the Lotus Bloom. Mm -hmm. Also stops our Bobbles too, so that's not not nothing. Same with Chalice. And I don't know what to bring in here. I mean, we're uh, we have a decent number of like good cards against them, but like not much to bring in. I don't really know what they board in either. I haven't seen that deck in a while. I, don't think, I guess I'll just bring in two Shattering Sprues. I mean, better than like Unholy Heat or whatever. So I don't think I want to bring in the Void Mirror for just the Lotus Bloom. And also with our discard, we can put them into spots where they can't use Lotus Bloom immediately. And again, they don't have time to shatter it. So Lurus, I choose you. Um, so we got a Monkey. We have no way to cast it though. So we can't keep this hand, unfortunately. Uh, opponent keeps seven. We're going to mulligan. Sure. That's great. Going to ship the... uh ship the land here. We should have monkey on turn one into a uh, double discard on turn two. It's pretty great. Oh, never mind. Okay. Well, that makes our hand a lot worse. <laughs> a lot worse. Not much we can do about that one, honestly. Not much we can do about that one. Right. Uh okay. I guess like if we just play Voidwalker and they ever cast Angel's Grace, we just like they just can't win, I guess, right? So I guess that's fine. Very weird interaction. Very unexpected interaction. Monkey. We have we have had monkey answer one a lot. No lie. No lie. Woodwalker again, sure. Monkey. We get a Spoils of the Vault. Choose a card name, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card with that name. Then put all other cards into your or put the card in your hand. Exile all the cards available way. Lose one for each big card. So it's kind of a kind of an amusing card. Alright, just uh void it up here. Blue, blue, Thassa's Oracle. Um, Thassa's Oracle does block Ragavan. That is pretty annoying, actually. All right. I mean, we boarded out our Unholy Heat. Still four Lightning Bolts in our deck. They do top a card. So it's basically a Scryed 2 there. And we are just going to leave up Voidwalker. We are not going to attack with it. I don't think, I don't think, I'm not sure if we can lose with it untapped. So just play a second Voidwalker, play land, so you go. Suppose we'll play it untapped. I can't imagine our left actually matters, so. Pretty amusing they do need to cast Angel's Grace to win the game, and Voidwalker does stop that. So, on tap. Another Cole against Command. Okay. Um, so now we attack with one of these, and I guess we're just going to put Lurus in our hands. Like, oh, we can't make the discard. Can't kill Thassa's Oracle. Um, not really doing a ton here, but forcing them to beat the Walker to win the game. They have an Echoing Truth. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, and now we're probably dead. So if I had left up the... All right, if I had left up the Cole against Command, we could have killed it in response, but they would have targeted this one probably. So we are probably dead now. Yep. They have another Oracle. I can see the whole deck though. All right, so they've got uh, a Dragon Lord Jamoka. Uh, left Impact Negation is kind of weird. Profane Tutor. 
ley line, they have four ley lines, which is pretty annoying. We can't, we can't, can't do anything about it. They have a dam. All right, so mostly just like, was that one echoing truth? They drew, they, oh, they have two echoing truths. So they need to draw the uh, one of the two echoing truths to beat our Voidwalker, otherwise they can't win. So I'm asking Dragon Lord Dramoka, which is a thing, I guess. Um, Shattering Spree. This is fine. It's funny, we could like, you know, if we had, uh, if we had just not attacked with the Voidwalker and then left up Colgan's command, they still might not be able to win because we can kill the one they target response still have one up. By attacking with one, we expose the other. But we'll see here. All right. Uh, plan first. Lurse. Mostly just lost that game to the lay line, honestly. But I'm um, going keep this. It's fine. Not great, but fine. Obviously, they have ley line again. It's pretty annoying. We have Woodwalker, so. Put a mulligan six. Obviously, if they try to mulligan to ley line, like, the ley line itself is also a mulligan. And they're also a combo deck. So if they go to, like, five looking for ley line and they find it, they're on a four card combo hand, which is pretty bad. So, you know, ley line's sort of like, up oh, there it is. So if they have it, they have it. it kind of can't, can't do much about it. So, um, all right. Yeah, so yeah. Let's see how good their uh, their five card hand was. Or is. City Brass. Lotus Bloom. That's right, so Colgan's Command can hit Lotus Bloom. That's okay, I guess. Alright, thumbs up. Dragon's Rage Channeler. I mean, that's cool and all, but we gotta play this Voidwalker, I guess. It's also like hard to cast spells, honestly. Like, I mean, should I have like, maybe I should have brought in like Void Mirror or something like that. This problem is like, we just can't even cast our like, like our bolts or thoughts. We can't like, we can't board out thoughts. He's a profane tutor. It's pretty good. All right. They're hitting on all fronts here a little bit. We're going to, we're going to attack. Cause they're not going to win this my next turn. So. And you can, so now you can see the awkwardness of uh, of the Graven Cairns, of course, with the uh, the one mana spell. But we'll just shock this in. Play Channeler. And then, I mean, we could Thoughtseize ourselves uh, to put the the Bolt and the Thoughtseize in the graveyard and Surveil. I think we're actually going to do that. Like, I mean, Thoughtseize has no value and Bolt has essentially no value. I could Bolt an Oracle to get through, but yeah, we're going to do that. Put two cards in the graveyard for this. Scries for uh, this, so... And thoughts these ourself. Trigger this. Shattering spree. That's gonna go on the bottom. Or in the graveyard, actually. Surveil. Take the bolts. We need to just show our cold against command to our opponent, but it's fine. Uh next turn we're gonna leave Woodwalker up and force him to have an answer for that as well. We also have Shatter on the Lotus Bloom. And then I guess we'll have to deal two damage to ourself or something like that. But all right, so draw a monkey. Um, we could dash here. I don't see much point in that, honestly. So they have four spells in their hand. We could definitely just lose next turn, honestly. But I mean, what are you going to do? You know, we have Voidwalker up. So we'll leave Voidwalker up. We'll tackle for one with the Trandler. We'll hard cast Monkey and leave a Cole against Command. So now they need to remove the Voidwalker to win also because we can hijack their Angel's Grace. I can also play Lotus Bloom or, or Profane Tutor if I wanted to. But I don't think it really helps us, so. Cast Tutor first. Tutor's going to get whatever they want because that's how Tutor works and <laughs> no reveals. Okay, here's Lotus Bloom. That's going to resolve. When that does resolve, we're going to fire out the shatter and hope it's good enough. So we're going to have to shatter and then we can't do anything to them. So we'll have to make ourselves discard, I guess. 
So we discard shatter that and say a little prayer. Surveil. So this card's really good. Bobble. Bobble goes to the graveyard. Right? Yeah, Bobble goes to the graveyard. So puts an artifact in. And uh, let's see if they crack this for mana in response. Looks like no. So their mana is extremely taxed right now. They have two lands and a gemstone, or one of them being a gemstone mine. Dark Six Shores, sure. There's City of Brass being tapped for a Phyrexian on land. That buys some time, but um, not too bad for us. We draw a, a Lightning Bolt. We have Instant Sorcery Artifact. No fetch lands this game, kind of weird. So we'll tag with the Ragavan and the Channeler. Obviously, they have a ways to go as far as uh, dying, but they got to beat the Voidwalker and assemble a combo here. Oh, you know what? I probably should have bolted myself um, and tried to surveil into a land for extra damage. That's probably a mistake on my part. Because this bolt isn't doing anything else at all, so... We hit a Lotus Bloom. Cool. All right. Um, we're going to put the Lurus into our hand. And we're going to say go. Again, I, I should have bought a bolt to myself. I, I, I had missed two damage. But a potential two damage. And my, my, my top card's a land. A land or a creature. What's that? Oh, cast that circle. All right, never mind. Never mind. I'm very glad I didn't bolt myself. I am very smart. Uh, I am very intelligent. And that spoils the ball. Oh, we just lose. That's gross. All right, I guess we lose. Man, they had a pretty insane hand. So they're mulligan and stuff too. They, they kind of had it all. They didn't even, didn't even leave the Lotus Bloom. All right, yeah, that's pretty wild. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't even need to use Angel's Grace. Close the wall. Yeah, I mean, they were able to win the game without using Angel's Grace. So they had the end life. That's pretty good. All right, I guess they win. Um, yeah, it's pretty annoying. Could I? Uh... Play it this turn. Yep. All right. This spoils the vault. Name something fun. Oh wait, that's how it works. Hit the top. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they got us. I don't know. I guess I mean they just won the game solely on the back of Leyline teams two and three. Um, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? One and one. All right. Uh, kind of like a little annoying because like without Leyline, they probably don't win either one of those games. Um, and like, you're not a favorite to have Leyline in your hand, you know? But say la vie. Say la vie. Um, also, they had to beat the Voidwalker in game three. They had, be, they had to beat in both games. They couldn't use Angel's Grace in game three and they managed to have both combo pieces. They guess Tutor, obviously, which is like, you know, reasonable, but... Didn't need the mana. I do, I, do, I, do, I do think that Profane Tutor is very, very good. It's very, very good. So, All right, round three. Another die, war, die roll victory. And another um, reasonable hand. No monkeys, but you can keep this. Thoughtseize, Voidwalker is fine, I guess. We're just going to get a Swamp here. No real need for double red, and between the Thoughtseize and the Fetch Shock, you know, if they go turn one like Suspear or whatever, I don't really want to be uh, taking damage I don't need to be taking. All right, so get ourselves a Swamp. Cast Thoughtseize. And what is up, my friend? Mill. Our opponent is playing Mill. And they let the Thoughtseize resolve immediately and did not archive trap us. Uh, Adron Crab is the O2, so we can kill it with a Unholy Heat, which is cool. Um, 
I imagine we're taking Archive Trap here so we can kill the crab. So, hmm. hand does not seem particularly good. So they have Field to Borrow Field, Visions, Crab, Visions. Play Borrow. Play Crab. Now the question is, do I want to play Voidwalker or do I want to play Unholy Heat this turn? I think I like to play the Voidwalker because if they mill over a creature and I draw a land, I can call against the man to kill this and then get back to the creature, which is kind of cool. So crack this. Obviously, Leto will not matter. doesn't matter here at all anymore. Play Voidwalker. So you go. No spot where Voidwalker doesn't feel very good, honestly. It doesn't really do much in this matchup. Their graveyard doesn't matter. I guess, like, it matters. It doesn't matter if I draw the lock. My graveyard matters if I draw the lock. So, yeah, I don't know. So they draw another crab and they field me. Uh, or I play a field. We mill over some stuff. And we draw a Croxa. That would have been a much better card to mill than it would have been to uh, to draw for turn. That's definitely for sure. But, all right. So we just uh, we just fire in here. We're just going to attack and we'll unholy heat one of the uh, the two crabs. Don't want to turn on these visions from beyond, so playing a second Voidwalker is not okay here. We are Delirium too, so that crab is really fried. Another crab, okay. And another field that runs, sure. So crabs all day. And they're going to mill over some more stuff. Their hand is Visions, Visions card. We draw another Cold Against Command. All right. I mean, I guess. So now we have 17 cards. So now they draw, now they can just Field of Ruin us and then play Visions. So that's actually, that's pretty gross. Pretty, pretty good draw from our opponent there. Yeah, they get to cast a Recall here. They do have Triple Field, which is pretty awkward for them. They're going to field us, sure. We'll get a mountain. The land was tapped, so we couldn't use the mana anyway. Mill some more cards. Now we're at 29 cards remaining. They cast a Visions. So now they have three new cards and a black mana. And we kind of aren't doing much. I'm not going to lie. Yep, that's a fail push. All right, so we kind of got nothing. And they're going to Surgical my Dragon's Rage Channelers. Sure. So I guess we're trying to draw a land. We can cast Coligan's Command, kill this, and return like a monkey, maybe. There's a land. We have 25 cards left. So return a creature, deal two. So we're going to return, I guess Monkey is the best card to return. They have three cards in hand. And just the cheapest card also. They actually left the Rage Channeler in the graveyard, which is interesting. Um, suppose they were to draw the 03 Crab. That would make Ragavan look really bad. Um, but... So annoying, annoying that we haven't milled over a Croxa yet. Um, there are three total Crocs in the deck. So there are two remaining Croxas and none of them got milled. Casting Croxa just for four straight up is pretty good. So another recall here. It's pretty good. Now they have six cards in hand, but their mana is very awkward. These Field of Ruins are looking pretty bad. Um, snow covered. We still have one basic in our deck if they want to field us. We draw a lightning bolt. All right, here's Voidwalker. And there's a monkey. And here's a monkey. They're at 12 life points. We have 24 cards in our deck, and they have a lot of cards in their hand. I like a lot. Push the Voidwalker. Fetch something. Field of Ruin. We need the land, so we're taking it. There's one less card in our deck, but 
We have Archive Trap 2. It's a Force Surge, so it doesn't matter. Another push. Yeah, I mean, when you draw six new cards, uh, you know, your hand tends to be pretty good. So that's definitely not ideal for us. And now our fetch lands are off. Maddening Cacophony. Okay. They're at 11. Probably have a Drown also. And we, oh, we, we, did, we did Mill Crocs this time. We have two bolts. <sighs> Making them discards worthless. Returning something is like fine. Putting Lurus in our hands, pretty unexciting. Just playing Crocs is pretty bad too. We do have two bolts, which is kind of nice. Um, we'll just call against command, deal two, return Voidwalker. It's actually Chandler. Same clock. You can also play Voidwalker and a bolt, so I guess we'll just say go. I'm not going to put Lurus in my end. I don't think that getting a fourth mana is like a reliable thing. We have like a few mana producing lands left. So even if we were to put Lurus in our hand, we'd probably just be casting a naked Lurus next turn and not even uh, playing a one drop too. So, all right. So uh, return creature, deal two. Return the Void Walker. Puts them in nine. And you know, we get into a spot where like we have no cards in our deck. We end up just like bolt them on our upkeep before we draw. So that resolve, sure. Thought sees. I mean, if we thought sees, we're not playing a threat. So we're just going to play Voidwalker and hope that it sticks. Black? What is this? Hardcast Archive Trap. Okay. Um. So we are dead. Because they hit the last bolt. And we are at zero, and yeah. So we're like just dead. We have bolt, upkeep, bolt, and they push two. All right, sure. All right, so kind of a tough game there. Um, kind of a tough game. They uh, kept a pretty bad hand, and the, the first few draws definitely really helped them out a lot. But that's okay. Um, it's funny how the, the, the one side of this of Voidwalker really hurt us there. Um, I guess we never really like mattered, but couldn't hurt our own graveyard. Uh, explosives, Chalice. I guess you want on holy heat. They should have a million crabs. So, I don't know, like a thought season on Earth, maybe. What do we not want? Again, the void walkers aren't particularly great here. Um, one drops, removal spells, discard spells all seem great. Croxus seems great. We'll just cut like I guess the I think Torox pretty good. Um, on Earth, thought seize, heat. I mean. Void Mirror Explode, all these also seem pretty bad. This is fine. Obviously, obviously it's, it's not like terrible, it doesn't seem optimal. Um, whereas the graveyard stuff seems good. Our channel wars are gonna be huge. Crocs should be available most of the time. So I think this is fine. On the play. I mean it's not a very good hand, but at the same time, on Earth is basically just a creature because they're gonna mill. They're gonna mill us, obviously. We have a scry, with a bobble, and we have a bolt for their first crab. Probably want to mulligan to a threat. Just like play a threat, they kill it. Yeah, it's mulligan. Well, that's a lot worse. Uh, I I guess we're keeping. I mean. We have Bobble, turn one, thought seize. It's now this, this hand needs lands, unfortunately. The thing is, like, the last hand, they're going to give us things to do with our mana by putting cards in the graveyard. So it's kind of like okay. Whereas a one lander, like, if they mill us, we have no way to benefit off of it. Uh, opponent kept seven. We obviously have surgical and stuff, too. All right. I mean, I guess they're going to keep. I'm going to ship the Croxa or the Coligan's Command. Probably Croxa. More chances to defend the millet. All right, so we'll start on Bobble, Bobble ourself. If it's a land, I think we're just gonna say we're just gonna keep it, and then we'll thought seize on turn two. Top card is a Dragon's Rage Channeler. I think that we'd rather just uh, 
try and draw land next turn. So Crypt, Shock, Thoughtseize. Her hand is Drown, Push, Maddening, Visions, Visions. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Um, I don't think that's kind of like a bad matchup. Honestly, like, this deck seems really good against us. We can't really exile our own graveyard. Drown and push are always on against us. Like, I guess it's maddening, but, like, I don't know if we can beat the Drown and the push. We just have so little action. We just mulliganed and don't have any threats or lands or anything, you know? Snow-covered mountain. All right. Play Shores. Say go. Monkey. I mean, like, I guess we're just playing monkey into it dying. I mean, just gonna cast it. Get it back to Colgan's command at some point, maybe. Like, play that. They'll push it. They'll untap. They draw a crab. We can kill it. We do have Delirium. Pretty quick. Island. Go. Their hand is Vision Visions Drown Card Card. I mean, the good news is that they try and field us with a third mana for Cole against Command, which is kind of cool, I guess. Drew Land anyway, so. All right. Um, we could just put Luris in hand, I guess. Because if they don't field us, then we can't Cole against Command, so we can just drown it, so. Sure, they're not going to field us. Totally fine. Play their island. Yeah, like, so now we're in a spot where, like, they just have a drown in their hand, which is pretty good. We should have a lot of worthless removal spells because they have their, uh, they have their crab. We're going to bobble and target them. Top card's a crab. Okay. And I guess we just, we play Luris. They just, like, drown it, untap, play a crab. We can, it's, a, it's an 03 crab, so we can't Cooligans command it. We can try and K command back the Luris at some point. So draw a monkey. All right, look, monkey's fun. Play the crab. And say go. So they have vision, vision, spell, spell. Never mind. They're going to play. Hold on. So I can get mountain and end step on holy heat here. Then it's a little harder to cast Luris, but I can dash too. I think I like that. What? Oh, I definitely hit F5 and F6 to un... That's so annoying. All right, well, that's, that's really frustrating. Um, I definitely undid my F6 when they when they cast the thing, but I guess I didn't, so whatever. Um, yep, five is stop passing. I hit the five key. I don't know. All right, so pretty annoying. They have a blue up. We can still just bolt this. I swear, we're, we're going to heat it. Heat it, and then we'll uh, we'll dash this. I would have loved to have an extra mana available this turn. I'm not gonna lie, would have been really good. All right, we had an Aboro, we had treasure. We just say go here. We could have also like just resolved Coligan's command this turn, but five spells in hand. Black Cleave Cliffs. Awkward. Uh, Alright. I'm not going to dash. Um, I we're going to cast Voidwalker and Monkey.
They deal with either or whatever. We have Bolt for Crab. We have Call Against Man to return things. Only 11 cards in the bin, so they have Eliminate to kill my monkey. Hmm. I guess that kills Ren 6, I suppose. Not a card you see often in, uh, in Modern. Sure. You're up. They have four cards left. Again, only 12 in our bin, so Visions from Beyond here is not super threatening at the moment. Could change rather quickly. They are drawing all spells. Excuse me. Thought sees. Their hand is Archive Trap, Ashiok, Surgical Attraction, Double Visions. Ashiok's honestly pretty annoying. I'm a little surprised I didn't cast. I guess it's very awkward with the visions. It's kind of funny because it exiles the graveyards. So they can't cast visions. Um, I mean, Archive Trap is not super exciting. It does turn on the visions, though. They're at 18. Man. No creatures either. And they have surgical to sort of like counter our coal against command too. It's kind of gross. I think it might be archive trap. If we can't stop the visions, Ashiok is almost like a negative, a net negative with the visions in play. And then surgical just seems like pretty loose. So I think the trap. And then we're going to attack. We'll attempt to call against command at some point. Just to draw out the surgical. Probably target the Lurus, so they get no cards out of our deck. So they're going to just cash in a vision. It's great. So yeah, we're going to call against command. We're going to uh, recur Lurus to force a surgical. And probably just make them discard. They're going to respond with a Crypt Incursion. <sighs> okay, it's a pretty good draw, I guess. So there go all my creatures. They gain much life. So a much better way to counter that than the uh, the Surgical Extraction. So pretty gross. Um, obviously pretty awkward with the uh, Ashiok also, but, you know, whatever. It's fine. This card is Ashiok. They have Surgical Visions and a card. They're at 27 life. And uh, dealing 27 damage seems difficult, to say the least. At least I have a stealthy Voidwalker, though, right? Eh? That's what I always wanted, a Dothy Voidwalker. 3-2 Shadow. Surgical Visions. We have... Now we have 10 cards in our graveyard. They actually exiled the cards we already had in our graveyard. They have an Archive Trap here. Ugh. Gross. All right, well, now their Visions is back on, and I think we're just dead, honestly. I mean, you guys are in weird, weird games here. It feels like a pretty bad matchup. Our clock's not particularly fast. Um, their removal's very good against us. Like, I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's take the Visions from Beyond. Draw three new cards. Maddening Cacophony. And they have hit a Croxa, which I imagine they'll surgical. And we just like can't win. 
No, they're gonna hit the Coligan's command with the surgical. That seems like a mistake. Let's say I have two of them. Okay. They're just gonna give me Croxa? It's mighty kind of them. Shizo Death Storehouse. Okay. I mean, all right. It's a pretty fast clock. We do two bolts in our hand, you know. You have a Shizo to give it unblockable, which is pretty un well, not totally unblockable, but you know, fear. Centuries ago, Shizo was a verdant field of wildflowers. After 891 samurai died in a single battle on its grasses, it became a haunted moor. Fractured Sanity. Each opponent mills 14 guards. Okay. Down to two cards in, in graveyard now, or in deck now. I mean, I think Croxa kills them before we deck, so... Castle Lockwain. Probably don't want to do that one. Croxa attack. Discard Archive Trap. Oh my god. We, like, have a chance to win this game. We can also play another Croxa just to do an extra three damage. All right. So they go to 11. They are dead on board. They have to draw... A, uh, they have to draw a way to mill us or we win with the steel. <laughs> All right, whatever. What are you going to do? I mean, I, I imagine less than half of their deck is mill spells. They have a lot of, they have a lot of lands. They have a lot of fair cards. They have a lot of crabs, but they got us, I guess. I guess they got us. Uh, yeah, rough leak so far. Rough leak so far. All right. Yeah, I mean, doesn't feel like a great matchup, honestly. Does not feel like a great matchup. Um, and uh, so far in all three matches, Boy Walker's been pretty bad. I guess it was fine against the Ad Nauseam player, just for the the Angels Graves interaction, but still didn't like actually win the game. It just was like a kind of a cool interaction. So uh, over three on Boy Walker so far. So um, I clearly played this league. I like. It's my third time recording the video. I like 5 0 Boy Walker's insane. By 5 0 Boy Walker's insane. Threw those videos out. And then um, I'm keeping this one where, where the Boy Walker looks bad just to prove myself right. Definitely what I did for sure. Definitely. All right. Match number four. We have lost the die roll. So our first lost die roll. We have uh, a raid channeler, a command, and a bolt. Not a great hand. Let's see what our opponent does here as far as uh, keeps rolling. It keeps seven. Uh, I'm not particularly thrilled with this hand. Honestly, we do kind of have a cool play. We can like uh, channel around one upkeep bolt to scry, which is kind of cool. Uh, I, I'm going to keep, it's kind of loose, but Coligan's command too. We're leading on channeler pretty hard. Mox Amber. Okay. Sure. Okay. We draw a discard spell. So now the question is, do I want to play Channeler first or Discard Spell first? Mox, Amber, Polluted Delta. Possibly an Emery deck. Obviously, you can just bolt an Emery. Um, I'm going to play Channeler first. I think we can just, like, bolt whatever they do. And, like, oh, and the Scries are pretty valuable, too. Or the Surveils, I mean. Obviously, with the Delta in play, we don't really know what's going on yet. An island? Okay. All right, so I can call the Emery. Um, so now we're probably going to upkeep Bolt, kill the Emery for a Surveil, which is kind of cool. 
They have another blue. Tezzeret Urza. Explosives on one. That's a pretty good turn. We do have Cake Man, but they can't really use that here. So, all right, we'll just uh, upkeep Bolt. Surveil. Top card is Dothy Voidwalker. Um, Voidwalker also doesn't do anything about the cards already in their graveyard. Um, I don't really matter. I'm going to bottom this, I think. Or, or, I'm sorry, graveyard it. And we'll kill that. And then we'll play discard spell and surveil. So I have sorcery creature land and then another creature. I might keep this one because it's not helping out for delirium. And then of course we can just cast it next turn. We already have a creature for, for Colgan's command now too. So I think we keep this one. Their hand is Thopter Foundry and two lands. So their hand is pretty bad. Uh, I imagine they are going to just pop this explosives now to stop any future surveils. They play a Delta, so they, now we just don't know they have two lands. Okay. All right. And they're going to let me untap too. Wow. Uh, I mean, we're still just going to attack for one. Just like fine, I guess. I feel like we haven't put a land on the graveyard that off. We should have not drawn any fetch lands. You know, it's kind of weird. Probably weird to draw five lands and no fetch lands. Mm -hmm. I imagine they'll respond to the Voidwalker to, to not lose the explosives. Because they want to be able to deal with the Recurvus later. No? Okay. Well, what do I know? What do I know? Crack Delta. Get Water Grave tapped. Absolutely. Welding Jar. So definitely an Urza deck, obviously. Olive Fountain. Yeah, I mean, they kind of fell apart to one removal spell and one discard spell. I'm not going to lie. Coligan's Command, a Lightning Bolt. Um, obviously, Coligan's Command doesn't do much now with the Jar. They have a Swamp in their hand. We probably just jam here. We could bolt them and try and surveil a, a land or artifact into the graveyard, which might induce them to pop this Explosives. Um, still have K Command up too? Sure. That's a sorcery, but also not very good. So we'll bottom we'll just graveyard that, I mean. I guess Voidwalker does stop the Sword of the Meat combo, which is kind of cute. So I might be interested in just like recurring a Voidwalker here and like making them discard or something like that. We'll see what they play, obviously, but here's Swamp. So they have one card in their hand. All right, so we're gonna yeah we're gonna make them discard the last card and then just recur Voidwalker, get a surveil into. Target player discards a card, return a creature. Surveil yeah, Torok. Uh, I can't even cast it right now, and uh, yeah, we also want the creature in the graveyard, like creature back in the graveyard. So, all right, so that's that. They discard their card, which is a Mox Amber, sure. So pretty bad draw from our opponent. Yeah, I'm not gonna draw on our side either, honestly. All right, I mean, yeah, get in for, uh, get in for some, some pokes here. They're holding on to his explosives for dear life. They refuse to use the explosives. And they're dead on board, I guess. Not a very exciting game. So I need to draw a removal spell on my turn. Or not even try. Not even try. Top cards were Bloodstained Mire for Delirium. All right, so pretty uneventful game there. Um, we're going to be bringing in our Alpine Moons for their Urza Sagas. Um, 
Shattering Spree. They're like important cards aren't really artifacts. Obviously, you can kill a Thopter Foundry and the like, but at the same time, like, I suppose we could also mop up some Urza tokens. Um, Voidwalker does stop the Thopter combo, so I guess it's fine. Bolt and Heat. Uh, Heat can kill an Urza or a Planeswalker. Bolt does less than that, so you want to bring out some Bolt to bring in the Heat. It's a lot of cards to bring in here. we got to cut some stuff. Um, Torok. Extra discard. You need to kill Emery if they play it, obviously. So... Give me Donnie Shattering Spree, I guess. Got the Torox. Like, Culligan's Command seems great, obviously. We want all our threats. I can see Croxa not being, like insane but maybe we like shave a crocs and leave a bolt in seems reasonable okay hand is it's passable it's not great but alibi moon for urza which is pretty great a rule for emery crocs on turn two is not an ideal play but it is a play not pumped about it, but it's fine. Pluto Delta, Tormod's Crypt. Sure. I mean, like, it's not that big of a deal. I imagine they only have one of those and Bobble. They have Emery, too. No, no Tormod Emery. Okay. Uh, so, let's play Cliffs and say go. I'm not going to bother playing Alpine, Alpine Moon on Urza yet. I want them to, to make the land drop. And they won't get any value off of it because they can't actually do anything about it. It's just a, a land drop for one turn. And then it kills the land for one mana and then prevents all future Urza's. Urza's Saga. Urza's whatever. Bobble. They peaked at themselves. Thopter Foundry. Sure. I mean, sure. Okay, I guess we'll play this Woodwalker. Does turn off Sword of the Meek. It's also just a killable creature, but... Unholy Heat. Cool card. Cool card. All right, fetch. Tap three for, uh, okay. They're just playing Lurus straight up, <laughs> I guess. And we will be killing that Lurus straight up also. Yeah, it's fine. Just kill that attack. I mean, now we can, like, use our Voidwalker to cast their lures. I don't want to do that, I guess. But, all right, yeah, kill that. It's not like they're looping things anyway because we have Voidwalker in play, but that's fine, I suppose. Shock that in. Get in for a bop. And then do I want to Croxa here? Just, like, get a card out of their hand? That's fine. Obviously, we're, we're going to lose it to the Tormod script if they really want to do that, but it reduces their artifact count. It exiles the Woodwalker, discards a card out of their hand. It's better than just doing nothing. They discard a Whir of Invention. It also went to Bobble. So draw card bobble. Four total cards in hand. I suppose we're a ways away from actually recurring Croxa anyway, so 
no immediate need to Tormod script. We have Urza Saga covered, which is definitely the best card they could draw, probably, honestly. Just a self contained threat. Tapping four. This is a Planeswalker. Don't recall if Tezzeret makes things permanently five fives or temporarily five fives. I think it might be permanent. We can just unholy heat the Tezzeret, so. The fact that this thing hits Planeswalkers too is really, really solid. Very, very good card. Sneakily good card. Um, I sort of like glossed over this card when reading the uh, the spoiler. Felt like a, a draft common, but Delirium, you know, it's funny because like Mishus Bobble is the kind of the card that holds everything together. Without Bobble, like Delirium might not be super attainable you know but all right so I mean, we're just gonna attack here nope blue 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 and they're going to cast this is a word invention for possibly ensnaring bridge uh i mean that would be annoying but we have like coligan's commands in our decks we can destroy the bridge eh, sure just chilling. Two cards in hand for them. Can't currently uh, Thopter Foundry combo. Mox Amber, sure. School at Water's Edge, sure. Tezzeret, Asian Bullets. Look at the top five. Or Artifacts, but five, five forever. Okay. We obviously have Bolt and Unholy Heat, so... Look at the top five. We have instant creature land. Schwabel, sure. So we're not going to end up doing anything. We're just going to crack a fetch and uh, put a land in our graveyard. Untap. Draw a black green. All right, so now we have to kill Tezzeret. So I guess we're going to need, to, we need to double spell to kill it, which is kind of unfortunate, but. Bring the heat. And just say go. I mean, can't attack or do anything, obviously, but none of these uh, Voidwalker cards really do anything. I guess we could, like, in theory, rec take their Lurus, but having Voidwalker in play to stop Thopter Foundry is kind of important if they draw a sword and they have a crypt for our Lurus anyway. So, all right. Now that, now that they've crypted us, now we actually can Void. So now we can actually Voidwalker, cast Lurus, and then get Lurus back. So they're going to crack some artifacts and start making Thopters. That's really fun. So yeah, now we actually just crack Woodwalker for Luris, cast Luris, recast Woodwalker, which is pretty awesome. So we're getting for one, sure. Foundry number two, sure. It's playing the card straight up. And time sieve, adorable. Sack five artifacts, take an extra turn. Not very good. All right, so we're going to cast their Lurus. Oh, duh. It's, it's free. <laughs> this costs mana. Whatever. Sure. Mix it up. Not a big deal. Doesn't actually change anything. Tap the black by accident. Sure. Uh, and then we're just gonna say go. So we've maintained our Void Walker. Now I have a Lurus in play. We can just draw a uh, Mishra's Bobble or something like that. They have some random 1-1s one in play, and we're just waiting to draw a Coligan's Command to kill their Incinerium Bridge. So 
It's going to be pretty embarrassing if we lose to the uh, the random couple Thopters here. I wonder why they haven't drawn Urza Saga yet, honestly. I have to imagine it's a 4 of in this deck. I guess we could, in theory, like, Voidwalker every turn. Also, we could, like, we could, uh, you know, get our own Thopter Foundry, start making Thopters and stuff, or whatever. Come on, opponent. You can do it. Explosives on two. I mean, oh, okay. That would kill their own two artifacts and my Voidwalker. I should get back anyway. All right. So do I want to get like any of their cards? Like we can get a Thopter Foundry here and in theory make like one Thopter a turn. Is that even like better than just attacking? We can't attack. So um, yeah, I guess we just keep doing that, right? So just like Thopter Foundry recast Voidwalker. Everything else sucks. I guess we could actually, hold on. We could actually, oh man, I misclicked. I, I wanted to go back. I could have actually gotten a whir to get my own bobble. That's pretty cool too, actually. Um, That might have also been a nice play. So if I, if I were for zero, get bobble, now my engine's online. Yeah, I, I meant to, I, I tried to unclick my, my Thopter Founder there. I didn't, I guess I didn't, it was too late, but sure. We just, well, I guess I could like, I'd rather draw a card or make a flyer every turn. If I get bobble. Yeah, whatever. I'm just going to do this. I think I'm advantage if we just keep draw this game out. So block that. We just need to find a, uh, Coligan's command. Dispatch my Voidwalker. It's pretty annoying. Pretty good draw, I suppose. Unholy heat. Okay, I guess your turn. Sight the explosives on two, sure. I mean, we can heat one of the Thopters. I don't particularly want to. Um, I don't think I'm really ready to do that yet. Ugh. All right. I think we're going to game three, folks. They can spin Urza here too. All right, we're going to the next game. They can spin Urza a few times. If they just find a sword, we lose anyway. And we actually got nothing going on. All right, so talking about it's kind of a tough game there. Um, We have plenty of answers to Ensnaring Bridge. We can like, I guess we only have like three. So I'll bring in some Shattering Sprees. Um, 
I mean, they have to have Urza and Saga in their deck. There's just like no way they don't. I, just, I couldn't even fathom building their deck without Urza and Saga. So, um, let me shave like a bolt. We're on the play now for Ragavan too, which is nice. Did we shave Croxa? They have like ways to exile it. They have, they have, uh, yeah, we just exile it, Snaring Bridge, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think our one drop should be good. We haven't really had a good like one drop draw, honestly. Definitely somewhat unexpected matchups. Haven't seen a single Asmo. No affinity decks. No. Uh... We've seen, I guess we've seen one Urza Saga deck, but it was an amulet, which isn't really like an Urza Saga deck. It, it is, but like it's not like an artifact deck. On the play. I choose you. And, uh, yeah, it's fine. Just discard spell into Voidwalker. It's not super exciting. We do have a lot of lands in our hand, but I think the discard spell into one drop or two drop is pretty good. All right, so discard Aru. What you got going on over there? Emery, Bobble, Prism, Welding Jar. All right, so they have one action guard. I mean, we could take like Bobble here and then just unholy heat the Emery when they play it. But I guess I still got the mill four cards. Which I guess isn't like that valuable. And they have turn one Emery. And we also, and then we need to play, we can't play Void Walker on turn two. Yeah, we'll take the Emery. Sure. Also, I guarantee I can, I can play a threat on turn two and kind of keep it going. So. Now, with Shattering Spree in our deck, I guess we have Graving Cairns also being kind of swamp. Play uh, Jar, Bobble, Delta. Yeah, I guess we'll get Swamp here. Like, we could have, like, could get a duel for maximum shattering here. We have the Graving Cairns already, so. So, like, we would need to draw another basic Swamp to get punished. I mean, then Shattering Spree for four is still very good anyway, so. Sack Bobble. Makes sense. Draw off Bobble. Their hands Pentad Prism, Dark Slick Shores. Card, card, card. Three unknowns. Crack Delta. And play Pentad Prism. Sure. Probably putting Luris in hand here. Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. Um, they have four cards in hand. I guess we'll Croxa here. Like, we could put Lurus into our hand. I guess the next turn we could, like, Croxa something else. It's more mana efficient. Um, we're going to have Land Sorcery. That would be Creature. So we're not even... This isn't even on yet to kill, like, an Urza or something like that. So, yeah, we'll just Croxa. I'm sorry. I mean, actually, I'll just Lurus. Yeah. Not ideal. I feel like our Luris hasn't been very good. I feel like we just like don't draw Bobble very often or our, our one drops. Like I feel like we've, we've cast Dragon Ray Shadow or like like once this entire league so far. Play Bobble, play Shores. Oh, I drew Urza. God. All right. Blue, blue, blue. Urza is, is, of course, very, very good. They have Urza and a 4-4. Four, four. Now, we can Shattering Spree. They could save the Construct, but... Killing a Prism with one and a Bobble. It, it is also, like, killing a bunch of mana, too. They have four mana available as well. Urza is real good. Uh... See what we draw. See what we draw. 
Hello, opponent. Are you there? Falling asleep over here. All right, and we draw a lightning bolt. It's honestly kind of cool. Uh, so you have sorcery, land. I mean, Croxa is a creature, and bolt is an instant. So we could actually do some decent stuff here. We could like Croxa bolt heat. But then, of course, that's awkward because we're like bolting up to four four. Doesn't really work. Um, we have to bolt. He has bolt first. Very very awkward. Very very awkward. Could fire off shatter experience. Go for all their all four of their things. They might save their constructs. Okay, I'm probably just gonna do that because I want to cut their mana down for next turn. So red, 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 red. Got the quad stone rain here. They have a dispatch. Ugh. That's gross. So they're able to use the mana off the prism, draw a card of the bobble, and then save their construct. It's all pretty, pretty not ideal for us. We've definitely, you know, limited their ability to use Urza for mana, but not a great exchange. Dispatch also exiled the uh, creature, so we can't lure us it back, which is kind of annoying too. But that's all right. Let's keep on pushing through. Uh, we have two card types in the bin now. Now you can Croxa bolt the construct, unholy heat the Urza. Unless they just have the combo and just kill us. So a, a Thopter Foundry, a Sword of the Meek, is one mana per token with an Urza and play it's infinite. So thankfully it appears they don't have it. Um, they have one card left. And we are going to take that from them. And then we are going to bolt the Construct and unholy eat heat the... Uh, they discarded a land, so that's three types. Instant is four, so bolt this. Can't sacrifice it, dope. Heat this, delirium. Unholy heat continues to impress. And now we have Lurus or Croxa next turn. And they got nothing. Also, just draw a Sword of the Meek. Okay, thank God. It was close. I got worried for a second there. I'm still astounded they haven't drawn Urza Saga yet. Like, I'm starting to think they're not, they're not planning it, which just seems ludicrous to me. Uh, we draw Ragavan. Um, so we could just play Croxa here. And... Just get going. Or we can like, I mean, dashing Ragavan's terrible into the foundry, so we could lure us, cast Croxa, and just bolt them, but we shouldn't cast Croxa, so. So one, two, three. Uh, I guess we'll leave instant. Like Roxa, they go to uh, seven. Cast the monkey. It's probably not doing much anyway, so I might as well have it in play. Maybe next turn we can attack with it and then lure us it back. Right. 
So just like don't whir for a I don't know if these first. Don't whir for a uh, ensnaring bridge here. All right. Um, that does not work. They only have two artifacts in play. So, I mean, I guess it works, but works in the traditional sense of it does what the card says it does. Sack Prism. Make a token, block Ragavan, cast Luris, replay Ragavan, say go. All right, you're up. So once again, looking pretty good here. And now they can't were for a bridge, so they are dead. But I was like, I'm going to argue for them, like not doing that, not sacking the prism because they lost their ability to were for bridge. They drawn war there. It, 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 it was uncastable. I guess they could, they could have word for sword. They're still short there too, though. So, all right. Two and two, uh, two and two. Some thin value so far on Voidwalker. Um, it has made life a little annoying for our opponents, both in the Sword of the Meek realm and the Angel's Grace realm. Uh, but it was never really decisive in either matchup. And then it was um, just a 3-2 against the Amulet Titan player and the player we played against where I already forgot. Um, so far we haven't really drawn our ones that often I feel like um, we've been like puttering around a little bit oh yeah the, the mill deck yeah I didn't do anything it's mill um, which is not ideal I mean the you know there there's kind of a disconnect a little bit because like this deck looks a lot like a shadow deck but the shadows will kill your opponent really fast Whereas we're kind of been, we've been in spots where we're like, all right, attack for three. All right, attack for three. What do you at? 12? All right, attack for three. You know, giving our opponents a lot of time, which is not a great thing to do in modern because the decks are just so powerful. Um, yeah. Just keep rolling. Finish strong here. Go for a winning record. What can I say? I'm not aspiring spike, I guess. All right. On the play. Match number five. Punt's also playing Luris of the Dream Den. And that's right, fine. We can keep this. I imagine we're going to discard the crap out of each other's hands, but. Companion Showdown. Excuse me. You will scream out your innermost secrets just to make it stop. Pot Mulligan six. All right, here we go. Let's rock and roll. What are you up to, my friend? It's a mirror. Spiring Spike rule. Spiring Spike is the croquis of modern. All right, so their hand is threat heavy. Uh, they have a removal spell for Voidwalker. And then Voidwalker is actually pretty annoying because obviously it's, there's some pretty weird stuff going on. Take the kill spell here and we'll say go. Might just like double discard next turn. They're going to play Channeler, which is really the end of the world. that and that sure so we can double discard or we can play void walker if we play void walker um they get to play their own void walker when they have one removal spell so i think we just double discard and then void walker into bolt i 
Alrighty, looks like they're playing Spike's exact list, as are we. They got two lands in hand, we have a threat and a removal spell, so uh, their mulligan's not going to help them out here too much. Suppose we are currently lacking an answer to Lurus, they are not going to attack, probably misclick. And, uh... Play Woodwalker. Probably crack their fetch and response. Keep those card types in the bin. And then, are you gonna like bolt this thing? Like, do you wanna wait? I guess we just wait. It's never getting bigger, right? Because we have Vizzy's Voidwalker in play, so just chill. There's Swamp. One black. Unearth targeting Voidwalker. Okay. It's cute. It's cute. So not the same list. They are playing main deck on Earth. We are not. And they surveilled the card to the top. All right. Um, question now is, do I want to use this bolt? I think I do. I think I do. So next turn we can put Lurus in our hand and potentially play a one mana spell. If we draw one. All right, so we jam. Current Voidwalker cards are Unearth and Voidwalker proper. Trying to get Voidwalker for Voidwalker doesn't seem super useful, so. It's gonna jam. They got one card in hand. They top the card that are drawing this turn, so they like the card. There's a swamp. What is the card? All right, so the card is a concession. Um, interesting. So mirror stuff, huh? Obviously, on Earth is super awkward because it's great unless they have Woodwalker. Probably still worth it though, honestly. On Earth, on Elite Heat. I want to have less uh, less discard spells. I, think I can go down to all the Thought Seizes. Um, don't need to take damage. This hits everything anyway. And then... I mean, I guess there's like nothing else I want to bring in. So maybe we should leave in one Thought Seize. I don't want Chalice. Explosives is like... It's not bad. You know, it definitely can be good. It's obviously awkward because we're playing the same cards. But at the same time, it's just like a decent answer to things. Um, I'll see my thoughts these though. I guess I'm on the draw. Sure, I'll bring some explosives over thoughts these. It's kind of cute with Luris too if he goes long. It's gonna be a real grindy match, I imagine. Our Torox would be kind of important. Uh, Croxa possibly important. Uh, Unholy Heat kills Croxa too. Unholy Heat is... 6 damage is like a real flashpoint. 6 damage kills most things. Really is like very close to Terminate. Kills most Planeswalkers too. Like Unholy Heat's great. It's a good card. It's a good card. Alright, so really want to keep 7 here. And we are going to. And is actually great, like actively great. Has a little bit of everything. Threat, discard, removal, um, lecture removal, a bobble for our Myers and our Luris. They play a discard spell here. Nope, it's a monkey. Sure, so you can kill their monkey. 
can shock the monkey, like literally shock the monkey. All right, we're going to bobble. I mean, we're, we're fetching no matter what, so we probably don't even want to bother um, looking at our own card. I'm going to play this. I'm going to look at their... I should just wait look at their card on their turn, like I thought these two. So let's get this. I'm going to get a Blood Crypt. I know it's a little painful, but... It makes life easier on future turns. I should actually... Hold on. I should wait till combat to do this so they can't dash one next turn. Um, play a second Bobble. And we're going to look at a card on their upkeep and then after they draw. So stay up. The reason we're doing this on their turn is so if they play Thoughtseize on us, they can't, can't access the Bobble card. So looking for their tar card they draw for turn. It is a Dothy Voidwalker. Okay. Then we'll allow them to draw for turn. And now we can look at the next card. So I go land Voidwalker here. We'll pop the bobble response again. Sacred Foundry. Possibly have like attacking the board, something like that. They're gonna play another Ragavan. Okay. And they're gonna play a drag. It's a pretty pretty aggressive hand here, sure. So we're gonna bobble them. Their top card is a bloodstained mire, sure. So now we're drawing two cards next turn. Unfortunately we can't explosives yet, which would have been really, really good, but well, they have their own bobble too. So now we don't know they're drawing. Right, so I didn't I didn't I didn't consider that they, they could have done this. I should I should have end stepped the bobble. I was trying to play fast. Um that just that's just recording videos for you in a nutshell. Um so missed a little bit of value there. And they're gonna bobble us. We're gonna draw a card, then draw a card, then draw a card for turn. Heat, Torok, Raven Karen. So you can go discard spell and unholy heat on the Aragavan. Woodwalker land. Perfect. So now we can do that. We can kill Ragavan. Definitely a pretty serious sub game here. Just like not ever getting hit by Ragavan. They have one card in their hand. It is a swamp. And now they have two. Now they have three. Channel are still not on yet. They have artifact land creature. Up oh, there. Now it's on. All right. So that's fine. Our hand is certainly reasonable. Not amazing or anything, but fine. See what they take here. I mean, Torok, like, they're actually, like, almost out of cards in hands. Torok isn't even that good anymore, but... This will give them the, the Delirium Messiah for this. They, they top the cards. They're drawing a good card next turn, too. And they are in the tank. Of course, dashing Ragavan is a threat. Um, but also steal their top card in theory, too, so. I think putting Lurus in our hand is pretty safe next turn. I doubt that they top the discard spell. They'll take the explosives, and now they have to attack, too. So now our, our Ragavan could go in for a little poke here. Um, no guarantee it'll find a castable card, but... Yeah, so they, they, I think they didn't realize that this thing had to attack because they seemed like they were they hesitated to attack with it. So we'll draw a lightning bolt, which is reasonably good. Um, I'm just gonna get like a mountain here, or I guess I'll talk about swamp. It doesn't really matter, but whatever. And then dash Ragavan. And let's take this top card that they wanted so bad. So they kept this card on top with the Surveiller. And let's see what it is. Channeler. Uh, yeah, sign me up. Ragavan's so good. So now we have our own 3-3, which is great. Um, 
Ragavan in hand. They have uh, two cards we don't know about. We've got a Bolt up if wanted. We have uh, a Monkey hanging out. We got to put Luris in their hand. Great. Um, they have three cards in hand. We're going to take this. We, we can we can kick Torok next turn and just get most of their hand, too. I can even block here, honestly. I don't really want to race. I think we're pretty far ahead on cards, so I'm just going to block here. And then we'll fire off Torok. If we draw a land or mana source, we'll Torok and Ragavan. Croxa, too? Jeez. Yeah, we're just going to Torok here. It's obviously annoying if they keep exactly Lurus, but that's, you know, a 33 percenter, and it's still really good anyway, so just kick this bad boy. Kick it. Also, they have a 4-3 in play, too, so. And it's got Pro White, so Lurus can't block it. They discarded Land Land. They kept the Lurus. They got their 33 percenter, which is pretty gross, but at least we have a, a Bolt in hand as well, and they have a good threat in play, too, so. We also have Croxa, which can make this thing even bigger. So, so we're going to play Lurus. I imagine to put Bobble here. Let's see if you're a land. I mean, to just kill the Lurus. We can even kill Lurus and dash. But it's possible just Croxa and their only card. Oh, they have to two cards, actually. So, let's see what we draw. The Void Walker. Um, yeah, I think that. Roxa a card, get in for five. Also, pulling Torok at a bolt range has uh, some value as well. Um, we can also just bolt dash. Hmm. I think I want a Croxa. Then I also just cast Croxa next turn too, so. They discard something. They discard a Croxa of their own. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'll give them that. And then we're going to Bolt Luris. Get in for a five ball. If they go land and then Croxa here. Croxa is definitely a, an unexpected uh, factor there. If they go land Croxa here, this game shifts pretty dramatically. We'll have to discard probably Ragavan. Bobble? Okay. Whew. I think we're okay here. All right. Lucky us. Lucky us. And Blood Crypt. So now, I'm not really interested in dashing Ragavan because what else could they possibly have if it's not a removal spell? They didn't don't have a land. They would have Croxed. Not a creature. They would have played it. I don't have a discard spell that would have played it. So it literally just has to be a removal. So very little interest in, in Ragavan here. We also drew a land for Croxa anyway. Uh, but I'm just saying, you know, if we hadn't drawn a land, I think that dashing Ragavan here, this turn would be a big mistake. Probably just cast both threats and make him deal with it. But uh, I guess I screwed up. I, I, I missed the point. Whatever. I screwed up. I was talking. I should have Croxa first, obviously. But Croxa, um, let's get rid of... Two of the artifacts, two of the instants, and a land. That leaves sorcery, instant, artifact, land. So yeah, missed a point with the, with the Croxa. Whoopsie. Still a two for a dash. Bolt still kills them. Yep, they just go to the Bolt. Just as we figured. And now also, Torok is big enough to attack through Croxa anyway. Don't think they really have any outs here, honestly. I guess maybe explosives on two, but they draw land also, so and it can't be a shock land or whatever. And we have Ragavan, so yeah, little little minor missteps here. Oh, that was actually really good. So they unearth their Luris, and now they can recast something, but I still don't think it's enough because they can't kill the Croxa. Will kill them unless they have a spell in their hand. Yeah. So okay. So went three and two. Went three and two. Um. Definitely, I mean, Voidwalker was about as minimally passable as, I, as I've as i been proclaiming for a while now. Um, it was obviously fine against the Angels' Graces in a weird way, and then obviously fine against the the Thopter Founder Sword of the Meek deck.
but not a knockout blow in either one. Both decks were very, very able to win the game uh, with Woodwalker in play. So kind of like a nuisance, you know. We didn't play against like Dredge or any serious graveyard deck. It was fine in the mirror, not particularly incredible, just fine. Um, so I'm not, still not a big, not a big Woodwalker fan. Definitely, I'm not, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. What I'm trying to say here, but um, Ragavan's insane. Channeler's insane. All the cheat spells are insane. Unholy Heat's insane. Uh, I like Torak a lot. I think two is fine, but deck seems good. I'm not sure about foreshadowing speed. It's a little, a little, a little uh, over the top, I think. But all in all, the deck seems very, very good. Seems like a very, very solid Jun deck. Uh, I'm undecided at present if I'm going to play it in the uh, the five thousand dollar open tomorrow, uh, based on this league so far. And then I have to do, do, do some more practice tonight and tomorrow morning. But um, not overtly impressed. Uh, more so impressed with like some of the cards in the deck rather than the entire deck itself. It feels like a very reasonable shell, but I'm not like dropped dead in love with it. Uh, but seems good. Seems good. So once again, I'm Davis for CoolStuffInc.com. As always, there's a written article companion to this video on CoolStuffInc.com proper. Watch it on YouTube. Make sure to check that out. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Also use promo code Jim5 for 5% off your order on CoolStuffInc.com to get a free Jim Davis Galvin token and 5% off your order, which is great. So check it out. CoolStuffInc.com, free content every weekday. Great deals on all your cards and games. Check it out. I'm Jim Davis, and I'll see you next week. Have a good one, folks.